once we know how to subtract... This lesson will teach us how to subtract integers. to start once again with the integer pit. So we'll go ahead and we'll draw a little pit here and we'll start placing things in it. We're going to put some stuff in this pit to represent the subtraction problem negative 2 take away positive 2. You might be surprised what happens here. Let's go ahead and place two negatives inside the pit. Okay, and remember the clear ones are the positives. Okay, so in the pit right now, pit. we have two negatives. Now, we have okay, two so now negatives inside the pit. Out of the pit. Represented Do by these black squares. Okay, so now it's time now, to try right and now, remove two positives. Negatives. But there aren't any positives in the pit. So how are we going to remove them? However, I can throw zeros in. Now, out of the integer. Well, we've got to find a way to get some positives into the pit so that we can remove them. But we can't change what's in the pit. So we're going to come up with the concept of putting a zero in. If you match one negative with one positive together they form a zero so if i put the zero in the pit like that and then come on and put another zero in the pit i still only have two negatives in the pit and two zeros the net result two negatives are still just in the pit now but since the zeros are in there, now, but, since the zeros are in there, can I now remove two positives? Yes. Yeah, there are two, physically two positives there. I can pull them out. Now, as soon as I do that, these two negatives are unattached. So pulling out two positives has the net effect of adding two negatives. You see that? I put the zeros in so that I would have some positive positives with which to work. Now when I pull those out, I create two unattached negatives. So what this looks like algebraically is this. To perform this, I started with the negative two, and when I pulled these positives two out, to subtract positive two, it had the effect of adding two negatives. And so raise your hand. Final answer is? Tony. What? Eight. <laughs> right now. Oh. Jeremiah? Negative four. Oh. Right. Oh. Negative. But they're all negative. Okay. One, two, three, four. Because we have to look at this thing from different ways. What if I take... Okay. How about another one? Let's start this time with a positive three in the pit. And let's try and remove um, negative 2 from the pit. Do you see any negatives in the pit at this point? No. Right, what do I have to do? How many zeros do I have to put in? We've got to get two negatives in the pit. The only way to do that is to add two zeros. So we go ahead and put two zeros in. And still, the net result is just three positives and a little bit of nothing. So, if we now remove the two black squares, the two negatives, we'll go ahead, we'll take them away, and the net result, when we take them out, is that we add an additional two unattached positives. So, the results now in the pit are the original three plus the two unattached positives for an answer of five. Anybody start to see a pattern now? Yes. So, okay, let's look for a pattern here. We've written out four different subtraction problems. In every case, the number that we subtracted, the net result 
after we took it out was like adding the opposite. Here we added a negative 2. Here we added a negative 5. Here, we, to subtract a negative 2 was like adding a positive 2. And to subtract a negative 4 was like adding a positive 4. Well, we've got the pattern. So how do we write it out in code? What do math people say? Well, they like to say it like this. To subtract, you add the opposite. Because that's really what's happening inside the pit. You subtract a number and you're left with, with its unattached opposites. Okay, now what does this look like in algebraic code? Well, for any number A minus B, that's going to be the same thing as taking your A and simply adding the opposite of B. Now, there are some math teachers who like to show their kids like this. They say, keep the first number in the subtraction problem, change the subtraction to addition, and then take the opposite of the number that is being subtracted. So they tell their students, keep, change, opposite. Let's look at a numerical example. Let's start with negative 13 and from that subtract a positive 70. Well, according to the keep change opposite, that would be negative 13 plus the opposite of 70, which is negative 70. Okay. Negative 13 plus negative 70 is equal to negative 83. Here's another quick one. How about 8 minus a negative 2? Well, that would be equal to 8 plus the opposite of negative 2, which is 8 plus positive 2, which is 10. Alright, how about um, 8 Alright, how about how about 8 minus positive 20? That, when written as addition of the opposite, would be 8 plus negative 20. Now think money, and if you have $8 and you spend 20, by George, by Jingle, you're in debt $12.